Здравствуйте, это Горизонт Атома. Я Николай Васильев. Мы в морском порту Санкт-Петербург. Hello, this is Horizons of Atom. We at the seaport of Saint Petersburg, witnessing a historic moment as a cargo of uranium hexafluoride is being loaded for the shipment to the United States. This is the last shipment in the framework of the HEULOU intergovernmental agreement, also known as megatons to megawatts. In a moment, we will tell you what it is all about. The Soviet weapon-grade uranium somehow reached the United States, and it happened in response to numerous requests from the Americans. Russian engineers know how, how to make a highly valued feat for the nuclear power generation industry out of the hazardous enriched material. Let there be light in the streets of New York City. How many light bulbs in the United States were powered with the help of Russian uranium? Nowadays, every nuclear expert knows about the difference between HEU, highly enriched uranium, and LEU, low enriched uranium. HEU has a greater than 90% assay of uranium isotope 235. LEU has a lower than 5% assay of uranium 235. Yet it is industrially enriched material, as uranium 235 represents less than 1% of natural uranium. Highly enriched uranium is more often called weapon-grade uranium. It was always produced exclusively for defense purposes. The Soviet Union needed nuclear parity with the United States in order to be able to deter possible strike. Nowadays, this superweapon secures both the country's sovereignty and global stability. Therefore, the volume of highly enriched uranium produced in the Soviet Union since 1946 still remains a military secret. By the late 1980s, the nuclear centers in Snezhensk and Sarov were producing several thousand warheads per year. In terms of numbers, the Soviet Union managed to catch up and even outdo the United States. But the Cold War was coming to an end, and the question arose as what to do with such huge stockpiles of nuclear weapons. We did an analysis. We performed analysis of costs required to maintain this arsenal of highly enriched uranium and we realized that we were getting excess product. Back then, in about 1989 and 1990, we decided to halt the production of highly enriched uranium at our enrichment factories because the material we had obtained was already in surplus. Obvious solution was to recycle highly enriched material for use as fuel in commercial reactors. I did a little calculation and discovered that it would be about a million dollars per weapon worth of highly enriched uranium if that uranium were blended down to reactor grade fuel levels. And so I decided, uh, well, I should suggest that the U.S. simply buy this material uh, in blended down form from the Soviet Union. Um, so I drafted an op-ed uh, editorial for the New York Times. Um, and but then I had a really amazing uh, opportunity in that Viktor Mikhailov, who was then Deputy Minister of Atomic Energy and was also the head of the Russian nuclear weapons program, uh, came to the United States to a meeting. And I went to this meeting. So I approached Viktor Mikhailov, and I, this is three days before the publication of the New York Times editorial. Uh, I suggested to Viktor Mikhailov that the U.S. buy material from his nuclear weapons. Uh, and he didn't think very long about it. Um, he said, that's an interesting idea, through his interpreter. And he said, how much could I sell? And of course, I knew nothing about how much H Heinrich uranium the Soviet Union produced. But I knew roughly how much the U.S. had produced. So I suggested 500 tons. And he said, I think we can do that. Um, I was quite surprised. We had very developed facilities for uranium enrichment. They accounted for at least 40% of world's enrichment facilities at that time. We had the most advanced and efficient equipment. For instance, I should mention centrifuges that the United States is still lacking. Discussions between the two experts from the two countries on how to use the energy of nuclear weapons for peaceful means expedited significantly in the early 1992, right after the Soviet Union became history. The uh, events 
including the fall of the Berlin Wall, the disintegration of the Soviet Union, had a tremendous uh, effect in the United States. And I would say one of the first and greatest concerns at that time was that the breakup of the Soviet Union would lead to four new nuclear weapon states, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. On February 18, 1993, in Washington, D.C., Russian Minister for Atomic Energy Viktor Mikhailov and U.S. Department of State's William Burns signed an intergovernmental agreement concerning the disposition of highly enriched uranium extracted from nuclear weapons. Under the agreement, Russia was to supply the United States with low enriched uranium obtained from 500 metric tons of highly enriched weapon-grade material in the course of 20 years. The HEU-LEU contract was then valued at $12 billion. It took three years to negotiate uh, this agreement just in a draft form. And so both countries were a little bit wary of the other with respect to whether or not they could follow through and actually implement such an agreement. But finally, both countries realized that there was more at stake than, than just the two countries involved. The initial proposal was to transfer highly enriched uranium to Americans. We couldn't do that. So it meant that weapons-grade material had to be converted into low enriched uranium suitable for use as fuel in commercial nuclear reactors. How we developed this technology. Seversk was a top secret town in the Soviet time and still remains a close location where uranium was enriched for military purposes in order to obtain highly enriched uranium with 90% assay of uranium isotope 235. This is the place where, according to the US-Russian agreement, the weapon-grade uranium was converted to a LEU, low enriched or down blended material, suitable for use in commercial reactors in the United States. Siberian chemical plant works with a small volume of weapon-grade uranium. These facilities are used to evaporate highly enriched uranium. It is then supplied through the red pipeline for mixing with the low enriched uranium supplied through the blue pipeline. You can see that the essay is only 1.5 percent. I would say that here, at this point, dangerous weapon becomes highly valued material for fuel to be used in nuclear power plants. An important point, low enriched uranium for commercial power generation was only obtained from former warheads, not from natural uranium. Under the HEU-LEU agreement, Americans could control this matter, and they did so. This confirms independently that the product we supplied the United States with was not produced by uranium enrichment. On the contrary, it is the result of de-enriching the weapon-grade uranium. Highly enriched uranium. Yes, that's correct. American specialists came to visit Russian facilities approximately twice a year. Beside, Americans had installed their monitoring devices on the site. Russian nuclear specialists, in their turn, also had controlled that the United States used low enriched uranium to obtain nuclear fuel only for commercial power generation. Just like Americans, Russian scientists and engineers travel to enrichment facilities and the nuclear power plants in the United States on a regular basis. Americans came up with their way of calling the HEU-LEU purchase agreement megatons to megawatts. Megatons are used to quantify the energy released in the nuclear explosion, megawatts to rate the electric energy. This is the Peach Bottom Atomic Station in Pennsylvania, which had used the down-blended weapon-grade uranium from Russia to produce electricity. Remember that in the United States, nuclear power provides one-fifth of all electricity. And for 20 years under this U.S.-Russian agreement, one half of our nuclear fuel for our plants has come from Russia. So when you look at it that way, one half of one-fifth is one-tenth, and that means one out of every 10 American light bulbs is lit by material that used to be sitting in a warhead pointing at an American city. Our megatons to megawatts is the most successful arms control agreement in history.
The 20-year contract with Americans came as a rescue for Russian atomic industry in the early 90s. Under the HEU-LEU agreement, the money earned from the low enrichment uranium supplies was not just to flow to Russia's budget. It had to be earmarked for disarmament, fundamental science, nuclear energy and for the protection of environment. In many ways, because of this project, we have preserved our nuclear weapons complex. We have disposed of the nuclear submarines, an extremely difficult task no one is talking about any longer now. The fundamental institutes have remained sound. We have moved way forward in such areas as isotope programs, including medical isotopes. Our calculations were showing that our strategic nuclear arsenal was in no way undermined. No doubt about that. The implementation of this agreement allowed those enterprises that were involved in the production of the nuclear materials for civilian use to weather out the dire 90s, especially if compared to some other enterprises. I wouldn't say that there were no bumps on the road during all those 20 years of the HEU-LEU agreement implementation. First, Russians had to avoid anti dumping sanctions imposed on the Soviet Union for reckless supplies of uranium to the global market. Then Americans decided to privatize USEC, the state agent for the program implementation, so there was a need to solve the issue of budgetary obligations for Russia. Then the Swiss firm Noga threatened with the confiscation of the Russian cargo anywhere in the world. But eventually 500 metric tons of former highly enriched uranium were downlanded and supplied to energy companies in the United States. People understood the importance of the bilateral uh, relationship. Um, we would have less tension in the world and we would see mutual advantages in these kinds of arrangements. I will say, however, that this is a rather unique deal. You're not, even today, you could not do this deal. You could only do this deal at that time in that world. Basically, it's important to cooperate, not to be in conflict. We have ongoing contracts worth of $5.5 billion that we have signed thanks to the reputation that we earned implementing the HEU-LAU contracts. One more important thing. While working with the USEC as the key enrichment corporation with a group of key Western uranium mining companies, we have learned how to interact with our competitors. In 1993, Russia planned to earn $12 billion under the HEU-LEU contract. It turned out to be much more, $17 billion. American power plants received low-enriched uranium obtained from 20,000 Soviet warheads, enough to produce 7 trillion kilowatts per hour, an amount sufficient to supply all American consumers with electricity for two years. It's impossible to tell all the details of the 20-year-long cooperation between the two superpowers in 15 minutes, so we have made a documentary with a more detailed story of the HEU-LEU project. Do not miss it on the Russia 24 channel. Our next program, Horizons of Atom, is coming up, as usual, in two weeks.